All right. So we're going to introduce a concept called resonance structures in this last video here. Resonance structures are simply uh, Lewis dot structures for a compound that differ slightly. And you would even think that they, they aren't really different from each other. But there's some evidence to suggest that um, these resonance structures, well, it's clear that these resonance structures and understanding them and using them as a describer of a molecular structure is, um, is, 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 is relevant and important. So what we start off by doing is just drawing the Lewis dot structure for something like this carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus. The Lewis dot structure for this carbonate ion can be drawn this way, where we have the carbon double bound to an oxygen here and then bound to two oxygens with negative one formal charges. You could also feasibly identify the Lewis dot structure as something like this, where the double bound oxygen is down here or maybe even up here, okay? All three of these would be feasible resonance or um, Lewis dot structures, and they only do where the electrons are kind of uh, moving, or where the electrons end up in terms of the double bond. Because if the electrons, if these electrons um, on, our, on any of the negatively charged oxygens moved in to the carbon to double bond, so for example, let me draw ourselves a little uh, carbonate ion. All right. If these electrons move into here, the result is that structure there. Now this structure is not stable because, whoops, that's supposed to be one dot there, because there's too much electron density on the carbon. So what happens is, as soon as this begins to move in, the electron density from one of these bonds here begins to move out. So this is kind of like a half a step, and then the next half a step is this oxygen now has the extra electron density, whereas this electron used to have, whoops, this electron used to have the double bond, now we see the electron, or sorry, this oxygen used to have the double bond, now we see the oxygen having the double bond is the one down here. All right, well this resonating occurs very quickly and is constantly occurring in the molecule. So it's not necessarily one of any of these three, in fact, it's really um, a, um, a blend of all of these. And if you actually experimentally try to identify what the length of these three carbon-oxygen bonds are in any of these, you'll see that they're all the same. Whereas if you just look at a, a typical carbon-oxygen double bond, it's usually a shorter bond. But because the length of these will all be um, about the same, it's showing us that the resonance structures are, again, a blending together to form what the actual molecule is. Okay? So, what are the resonance structures for the NO3 minus ion? Well, first we would draw the nitrate ions um, Lewis dot structure, and then the resonance structures would be created by changing that double bond to different places on the uh, on the molecule and resulting in um, different locations of the double bond around and you'd have these three different resonance structures. Now because there's these three different resonance structures we can predict what the average bond length would be for example between this nitrogen and this oxygen. If I was told that uh, a nitrogen oxygen bond length is nitrogen oxygen uh, bond length. Let's try that again. If I were told that this is 100 picometers, right? And if I were told that the uh, nitrogen oxygen double bond length is 80 picometers, right? So this bond length there. Then I could use my resonance structure here 
to predict what the bond length would experimentally be on a nitrogen-oxygen bond in the nitrate molecule or nitrate polyatomic ion. And the answer would be, this one would be 80, these two would be 100, but on average, that would make um, two 100s and one 80, right? So 380, and then I would have to divide that 380 by three, and that would be the average bond length of the nitrogen-oxygen bond in uh, the nitrate polyatomic ion, okay? So again, evidence of, of resonance structure. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to pay attention to here is what we call bond order, bond order. Bond order is um, simply kind of measuring the bond, how much electron density there is between two atoms. And we say that the bond order is one when you're talking about a single bond. The bond order is two when you're talking about a double bond, and the bond order is three when you're talking about a triple bond. You're numbering the pairs of electrons that are being shared between the two atoms. Look at the bond lengths and the bond energy, right? As the bond goes from single, double, to bond order of three, our bond length decreases. And but our energy, or the energy necessary to break that bond, the dissociation energy, increases, right? So we could also answer questions just like we did before, where we were looking at the uh, uh, relative bond. Let's see, where were we at? We were looking at this one here. We were looking at the, the relative, no, this one here, sorry. We were looking at the relative bond length, saying that this was 100 and that one was 80, and we would take the average. You could take the average of the bond length or the bond energy, right? Or the average of the bond order and predict what the, what the, the bond order would be for any individual one because of resonance, right? Okay, very good work.